Robert Redford played Washington Post reporter Bob Woodward in All the President's Men. He also produced that film. This is a signature scene right now from the movie Redford as Bob Woodward meets with his source, Deep Throat, in a parking garage. Pile of money. You mean? Where? Oh, I can't tell you that. But you could tell me that. No, I have to do this my way. You tell me what you know, and I'll confirm. I'll keep you in the right direction if I can, but that's all. Just follow the money. Robert Redford, it's great to have you on tonight. That film, you produced it. What made you decide, a guy who knows box office, know that this movie would have a great audience out there? Well, first of all, I don't know box office. I don't think anybody really does, but... But I, I was attracted to the story um, because I think that's at the basis of any good entertainment, starting with a good story. And, and I got involved with this project a long time ago. It was 1972 that I actually got involved with it. And at that time, it was a very, very small story that uh, no one had any idea about the mushrooming effects of this small story involving two unknown reporters on the low end of the of the work ladder in our society doing something that would eventually bring down the highest position in the land. To me, no one knew that that position was going to crumble. It was just what these guys were doing that nobody else was doing in the summer of 1972 when people were more focused on whether Hank Aaron was going to break the Babe Ruth record or not. And I got involved in that story then and then got involved with Bob and Carl actually before they wrote the book. Then they wrote the book and they said, well, we're going to be writing this uh, story on it and uh, we'll let you see, the, we'll, we'll let you have the film rights to it. So I had to wait for nine months while they wrote their story. In the meantime, all this stuff ballooned. And I thought, my God, I mean, what, what, what's going on? I'm, I'm inheriting um, a giant thing out of a, what started as a small seed. So I really kind of tracked this right from the very, very beginning. And, and then I spent, uh, you had to run against the obstacle that how Holly was perceived by substantial institutions like the press. Are they going to screw it up? Are they going to trivialize it? So we had a lot of obstacles to get over. And, uh, and so therefore accuracy and authenticity and a lot of research became very important. So when I got that involved in the research with Bob and Carl, who were very generous, and certainly uh, very cooperative. Um, I learned far more than I ever expected to know about Watergate. You created enti an entire Washington Post newsroom, didn't you, for the program, for the movie? Yeah. They were a little bit too out of control when we went in there. I mean, either had people trying to pretend like we weren't there or people going into the bathrooms to put makeup on. I mean, it, it got so out of control that we said, you know, we can't get our work done here. We're going to have to go out to Hollywood, and then they're going to say, ah, oh, you see, they went to Hollywood with a movie, you know. Yeah. But we well, took it pretty seriously. We duplicated the room exactly as it was. Let's talk about the garage scenes. We saw one earlier. I think we're going to see one again here in a minute. Let's take a look at another garage scene here with Steve Throat. The list is longer than anyone can imagine. It involves the entire U.S. intelligence community, FBI. CIA justice is incredible. Cover up had little to do with Watergate. It was mainly to protect the covert operations. It leads everywhere. Get out your notebook. God, it's like a sighting of a ghost. Bob, did they tell you uh, roughly who Deep Throat was or anything about him when you were quizzing them on the movie backdrop, the backstory? No, uh, obviously that was a huge attraction for me because of its cinematic theatrical value. Um, I queried it in the very beginning and, and Bob and Carl, it was, it was mostly Bob because Bob had the contact. Bob chose not to reveal and I chose to honor that. Um, I didn't feel it was my position to be aggressive about it and I didn't. And I figured if Bob ever wanted me to know, he'd tell me. And in the meantime, part of me hoped that it wouldn't come out because the mystery had such theatrical uh, advantages. And yeah. then now, of course, you know, all these years went by. But no, he never told me. I never asked. I speculated. Well, what was your I guess? Thought. What was your guess, Bob, in terms of the last third of a century to think about this? 
Well, in the beginning, when it was hot, there were a whole bunch of names that went around, which I won't bore you with. But, but over time, I certainly remember that thinking that whoever did this, whoever leaked, must have had some, I don't want to say vendetta, but some reason for doing it. Uh, either the integrity was being threatened of the, of the institution itself. I, I did feel it probably was somewhere around the FBI because I thought that they had some stake in it. Uh, and I read an article later uh, that pretty much confirmed that the FBI was enormously threatened by Nixon's desire to control all forms of government and based on what he did with the FBI and the CIA. And so therefore, it probably might be Patrick Gray. And so for a long time, I figured it was Patrick Gray uh, because it made sense that if the FBI wanted to prevent themselves from being uh, uh, demolished by Nixon in his uh, in his march for power, control, that they might have a stake in doing that. But I, I figured it was probably Patrick Gray. And, well, and Mark felt, I kept, there's a lot of speculation and, and re, you know, there's a lot of revision thinking about, oh, well, I thought all the while. No, I, I didn't, but I did think it probably was in the FBI. Okay, we'll put that down as a leaner. You're right next to him. Anyway, thank you, Robert Redford, who produced this best You're picture, welcome. best picture, All the President's Men.